This is Twit. Here, let me play. This is the thing that, I don't know if this is creepy, but this is very impressive. So this is now uh, another technology that Google announced that is going to allow the assistant to actually place calls on your behalf. Watch this. This, this one is wild. ...is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this, but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Now, this, this is wild. You'll hear, by the way, this sounds like a real assistant. They intentionally have her sticking in ums and, and pauses. But the thing that's most impressive to me is not that, but how she responds to a real human. And this is like the self-driving car problem. And, and sometimes humans steer you wrong or say, I mean, and it seemed to do, and of course these are canned demos, but it seemed to do a very good job of handling real world situations. Listen to this. This is the assistant. You. That's a real story. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. That's the assistant. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. That's the that's that's a computer. Sure, give me one second. This is a human. And she's up talking too. She is. She's up talking. Sure. What time are you looking she for? She said. Mm -hmm. At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Now, how is the assistant going to deal with that one, right? Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like. What service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will Lisa. see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. One of the things that scares me about that is that it's clear they're trying to make it fool the receptionist. <laughs> well, did you hear it? Turn around the robocall now. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine this technology in the wrong hands is terrifying. So, well, so and it also... I, uh, well, I get those all the time, don't you? I mean, I get those where they're, they're trying to fake that they're human. Yeah. Uh, and you ask them, are you a robot? And they have some can't answer. And, and they're not. Sorry. Go ahead, Stacey. No, I was very excited from a business perspective. Google's talking about using this for calling restaurants to see if they're open for holiday hours, for example. And that, if you can imagine the automation of data collection at that kind of scale, that is mind-boggling how quickly exactly. Google could gain yeah. an edge. Well, and this is really an example. Uh, to me, I, I'm kind of lately on a kick saying, stop calling it AI. That's a marketing term. Machine learning I can live with, but AI is a marketing term. Except that this is this is AI now. This is yeah. this is actually... Here, listen to this one. This is a much more challenging uh, call. I, I couldn't have done this phone call. I no. couldn't have done this restaurant, but yeah. maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Okay, so the, the human misunderstood the assistant. He was saying at 7 p.m. She thought he said for seven people. Maybe she's a robot. That would be awesome. She did a worse job of understanding him <laughs> than she does of, he does of understanding, or it does of understanding her. She's actually pretty difficult to understand. Listen to how this continues. So she's already throwing him, throwing it. I got to say it. It's really tempting to say him, isn't it? It, a curve. Um, it's for four people. 
for people when um, next night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like opera, like uh, five people. Now, you if you uh, are not watching the video and didn't see the caption, what the what the human just said is. <laughs> We only allow reservations for more than five people. For f so four people, you can come. For four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? Now that's actually the right response to that, wow. which is, oh, oh, mm -hmm. I don't need a reservation. Well, how long will I have to wait? And that's a very sophisticated, I think, response. For when tomorrow or weekday or for next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Wow. This is Turing test level. Turing stuff, test yeah. level. This is beyond, yeah, this is very impressive. When are they announcing this? Because this reminds me, remember Facebook M, but they put the person in the loop for as things got more complicated? Yeah, yeah. Facebook actually killed that project with the people. They kept right. the M A I efforts, and they're bringing that back for their smart speaker. It sounds like, but this is, and and I've got a lot of questions about was this? Obviously, it's not a live demo. So they said they had a lot. I don't remember the number of calls in the can, but my impression is this is an actual uh, project, right? So that means it's not it's something they're working on. And Google my, duplex. Google duplex. And I, my, it's mm -hmm. my sense that this is something they're they're working on. This they didn't say coming soon to a phone near you. Well, well, but but about almost a year ago, I talked on the show about BetaWorks had a um, voice uh, accelerator oh, yeah. and then demo session, and and they had showed exactly this where where it, it calls off and makes an appointment or buys flowers or whatever. So they you know these are companies outside Google working on this. The other interesting thing is seriously. You also get the opportunity at a really wacky level to have robot to robot in voice. Right. So rather than having to have an a voice becomes the API. But you don't even need right. voice at that point. If you got robot to robot, they could go. It, yeah. they could well develop their own. We've seen that with, with AI right. it does kind of make up its own language. Right. They could make up an AI language, but you don't need a you don't need a data communication. You don't need an API. Audio becomes that connection, which is fascinating.